but it just makes it, it just makes such sense in terms of uh, horses having like a telepathic connection with people almost if if that makes sense but what i'm what i'm interested in is is how this uh, and I, I think your your quotes from jung were quite spot on in terms of a lot of the criticism of our uh, mainstream society because there's a there's a line from the philosopher rene descartes that animals are machines and um, that they're not conscious. So uh, there has been this sort of uh, dominant attitude um, within Western society that's really profoundly alienated from nature. That's, that sort of disconnection is uh, an enormous source of social trauma and, and personal trauma. And so the idea that respect for nature connection with nature the interconnectedness that you were talking about uh, has a, a therapeutic function i think that your, your point about how this sort of therapy is uh, can really help people with mental health is uh, is really important so uh, thank you very much and i i just really uh, that sort of reflection on on how distant our mainstream culture is. Like you look at kids who are obsessed with screens and um, like, you know, there are some who um, who do have a connection with nature, but many who simply don't. Like there's really big uh, social um, trends of complete separation from nature. And, and so working to overcome that is just so important. And just one, one final thing. I, I think of it in terms of some of the uh, theological categories of, uh, of grace and corruption, that in, uh, in a state of grace, when, when, and so connecting with horses helps to bring us into a state of grace that is what we, re we really need for our salvation. Thank you. Thank you. It's a beautiful reflection. And um, yeah, I, I mean, I, I, I agree. I think horses are a lot more accessible to a lot of people um, than, um, than other aspects of nature. Um, so, so, yeah, I, 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 I do think that um, the fact that horses are getting people out into nature, I think there, there, uh, there are really several um, equine therapy businesses around Canberra now there's probably a dozen or more um, that you know people are coming at least spending that time in nature um, and I just want to say too about the young people um, that maybe are disconnected from nature there's also a, a large group um, and, and you know not and not an insignificant group of young people who are very connected to nature and are very distressed, and you know, you know, climate change anxiety, um, and you know, sort of anxiety about nature is, um, you know, is a huge thing that we see amongst you know the, the clients. Um, I mean, I'm always quite pleased in a way that I see that because that um, when people come to therapy with that, and it is starting to be. It is. I think it'll be in the next DSM or the one after it. That you know the um, psychology manual um, that climate change anxiety will be a, a thing or environmental anxiety. What's happening to our planet? Um, and when when those people turn up um, in 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 our um, to us in therapy, it it really is. Um, they found the right place because we can. You know, we can we can, we can um, give them tools to really explore that and and find you know find positive paths through that instead of the absolute depression that a lot of young people are feeling. So, um, yeah. Those sort of chemical. 
uh, just uh, masking of, of their uh, psychological conditions. Well, any any therapy, um, you know, any any non pharmaceutical therapy um, is valid, and in fact, that you know, there's a there's a rule of thumb that you should try it ten of therapy before you try any medication. Now that that that's not happening. People are getting medication before they've even tried therapy. Like, what's that about? I mean, that's that's a disaster in itself. There's also this thing with equine therapy that we've found is that it's the last resort. Yes. The last resort for uh, children with trauma, for PTSD. So people have tried a lot of things and this is it. They're, they're lost and they'll turn up. And what we've found the success is that this opens up again where they can calm themselves enough or breathe enough or whatever it is to then to be able to go and go back to the gym and go back to a different, to talk to their psychologist or whatever. So some, it's often been used as the last resort and it changes just enough for other things to start to work again. Yeah. Yeah, office office space therapy is not does not work for everybody, you know, it, um, and you know it cognitive cognitive therapy just you know talking and talking about concepts to and fro with your therapist um, can be very useful, but it's not for everybody, and it is a really it is very limited um, when you could be using the natural world and other beings. Um, why not? Yeah. I was just talking to someone about one of the, uh, just the most basic of examples was someone with PTSD who had come out. We went down to the horses and they were all laying down and we just sat down. And we actually sat for an hour and didn't say a word. And at the end, she looked at me and said, I've forgotten how to rest. I've just had an hour learning about what rest looks like. So it can be as simple. So we don't always know what it is, yeah. what the, the learning will be. And that's part yeah. of what we have to do is get out of the way of any goals. Or if people come with a story, sometimes we'll say, that's actually not how we want to start. Let's just be here and see what happens. Yeah, so we have... We have um... Uh, one example of someone who had tried about 15 years, a, 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 a soldier, um, a veteran who had started to talk about walking down the road. We were fixing the video up before. Oh, okay. So you can oh, you already talked to it. Yeah, yeah. You yeah. add your bit to it. Yeah. Well, yeah, I mean, she, we, we, had, we were watching it and sort of supporting it. We had some theories about what was going on. But we never discussed that with her. We never discussed any of this with her. And she wrote back to her us and she, I was able to regulate my nervous system um, because, you know, the horse basically wouldn't come with me until I did. And so in that hour, I learned for the first time in my life how to regulate my nervous system. Or oh, first time in life since her trauma. And... Um, yeah, and she just said after that her life she was she was back. So that was one the hour skill she with, needed with, with the horse, yeah. To be able to re engage with a lot of other parts of the life. Yeah. Human want for acceptance. You know, like we we want togetherness we want partnering the fact that you know the horse wouldn't go I mean obviously she chose not to go as well like she would obviously stop or something like that but you know, we, we just um certainly that that theme turns up so much with the acceptance and wanting to be loved um and um, I think that example was a little bit different. That was simply two nervous systems in an arena together. So our leader, he's a very, he, he's a very flighty horse, um, but he's learned to keep himself still, but in the frozen way. 
and he's like, she's like, come with me. He's like, I'm not going with you. You haven't, he's, the horse is saying, you haven't regulated your nervous system. There's no way I'm going with you. And so then she regulated her nervous system. After about, it took about four minutes, didn't it? She, 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 she finally got, this is happening in the back of the brain, the really million-year-old back of the brain, the animal ancestor part of the brain. You can't, you can't, she couldn't learn. She could go to as many therapy sessions. I'm like, okay, you regulate your system by breathing, by doing this, by, you know, all these different strategies. But she got reinforced the moment he relaxed, step forward. He's like, okay, I'll go. And so she got this instant reinforcement. And that's how she learned it. She learned it in the back of the brain. The same, the, there was the two amygdalas were communicating with each other. But your theme about wanting to be loved, oh, my gosh, that comes up all the time. And horses, dogs have really ruined it for horses because when you see a dog, it comes up to you and goes, what can I do for you? Can I please you do? I love you. I don't care what you do. I love you. Horses are like, hi, bye. Yeah. They do not care. They'll look at you in that one eye and that's it. They've made connection. That's all they, that's all they need. They don't need to come up and... We do actually have one who's a cuddle bunny because he's learned that that's what children want. He's learned to actually put his leg around and hug them in. And he's learned that. But that's that's um, that's not what horses are like. Horses, will they're not really, they don't need anything from us. They don't need our love or approval. Um, however, they love our connection and relationship and they love our respect. They love doing things with us. But it's a different sort of relationship. Our leadership. And our leadership. Like when we turn into leaders, they're like, leadership is everything in a herd. Every horse is going, I could be leader tomorrow. I, I, I reckon I, it's a bit like the APS. <laughs> <laughs> I, reckon I, I reckon I could have that job. And they're always doing that. They're all leadership. And, they, and when someone comes on, when a human turns up or a horse, um, we say to them, um, you will be treated as the bottom of the herd, at the bottom of the hierarchy, because that's what the others will assume. Unless you do something that shows that you have leadership and you, you know, simple as that. It feels so different. You feel it. You know it's different. If you have leadership and leadership comes in lots of different forms, then you get respect from the horses. Um yeah. The phenomena that I've heard of, and I've heard a few people speak about it, there seem to be some people that have a psychic intuitive ability to communicate with horses, say, for example, and get feedback and sort of kind of, they, they, it implies that they understand what the horse wants or needs. Do you think that's a real... Um, rational theme or, or, or does that actually happen do you think have you noticed that with yourself can you oh well how about your other feeding example yeah. yeah so i think is an ability for deep listening yeah, yeah. yeah. is the beginning of how much further it goes i'm unsure mm. but i don't think a lot of humans spend enough time um, improving their deep listening. So as the deep listening happens, you can start to get more and more connections. Mm -hmm. So the, we had the black horse that was up there before, um, was an older horse. So she's in her high 20s. And the leader of the herd really loved her, probably as much as I loved her. And she needed extra food. And she would come down of a daytime and I would almost feel that she was coming. And he would actually stop the rest of the herd from coming. I would see him standing at the gateway and allow her to walk all the way down. Mm. And this happened time and time and time again. Mm. And like, if I wasn't ready with it, she'd do it all right at the last minute. But mostly I would be there with the food. And the whole understanding was if the whole herd came, I'm not feeding her, I'm not having... I'm not feeding you everybody. You have to feed everybody. You can't just feed them. Yeah. So he did this day after day where he 
found a way for her to come down at a time that I could recognise and have the food for her. And then she would eat and walk back up to the rest of the herd. Mm. So there's some sort of communication going on mm. everywhere in that herd for that to happen five days out of seven. Have you ever had like a thought, you're observing the horse's behaviour or some such, and you're very close to them. Do you ever get some thought that will come in your mind, oh, maybe I should do that? And it's quite a joke. Does that ever happen to you? I think we or you, or you just dogs. Dogs. I think dogs like that, yeah. Sorry? I mean, I think yeah. The, the, the horses, yeah. the horses, I think the, the, they're quite amazing that the way that they can do things. Like they will, they will. We have a we have our house here, and basically the horses, like we we have hundreds of acres, but you know the horses can be positioned anywhere around, and you will find that the horses will move to a window where they know we are and and it, way, it could be way off in the paddock, but they'll position themselves in our sort of psychic space. Yeah. And then we go, oh, <laughs> you know, you know they yeah. just, and then, then we might, so, we'll be called to them. We'll do something or something will happen. Yeah. So our black horse we lost a year and a half ago. And the first inkling I had that something was wrong was she was laying down with totally normal except she was laying down on the dirt. And I called out to San and said, she's too elegant to lay on the dirt. Something's happening. And we called the vet because she laid on the dirt. She got up and she sort of showed a few other signs and then came good. But that was enough for us to know everything has changed. And that's not, that's just a communication. Mm. Yeah. Oh, yeah. I, th I think that we've, we've had the, because we've been working with them so closely for so long I think we've learned like I, I, I feel like they've tried to teach us something or we've learned from, from them a little bit and we've learned a little bit more so the, 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 the natural horsemanship sort of world where people aim to work with horses at liberty and without force and, um, and in partnership um, the, the greatest of those, they they will say to a horse, you know, say maybe say go backwards, and they might put a bit of pressure on or something, and they will take the pressure off when they see the horse thinking about going backwards. Not once it's been sport, but you can just see the horse is starting to think. It might have just made so you, and then the horse really thinks, wow. You, because the stuff that the horses are so subtle in their communications, we have lost the ability to do good body language. We're really loud and clumsy, you know. And so when we get really subtle like that, they they reward us by doing magical things. So like we've had horses do magical things and things, crazy things like horses that you know, um, like you know. Our stallion, I'm like, oh, can you go over this jump for me? He's like, no, like absolutely not. Like, I'm not doing that for you. I'm not interested. You're not going to make me do that. Okay, what about if you and I work together to get those two ponies over the jump? Over the jump, he goes, come on. <laughs> he's like, he's just like, you know, the the sort of um, yeah. It's just Oh yeah, 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 yeah. It's got to. It's it. Play. So for horses, safety, food, and then play. Are there? That's their. That's their goals in their life. They're, you know. They're, um, uh, that. That's it basically. I mean, it should be the same for us. You know. We've also run a process at home, um, six times or so, um, between mm. two to four mm. days mm. that we call mindfulness with horses. And so a group will come out, usually it was 11, we had 11 horses and we would sit and it was a mixture of um, basic meditation and, um, and then you had a horse. But what we did at the beginning was after the first meditation, we had all photos of the 11 horses all upside down. And all you had to do was pick up a card so you didn't know which one. And that was your horse for the two to four days. And so the first um, exercise with the horse 
was simply to look at the horse. Don't go anywhere near it. Just look at the horse. And that alone, having 10, 15 minutes of a person just watching the horse, just don't look at anyone else, just mm. watch your was enough for the horses to know who, who their, their person was. Who their person was. So if someone, the last one, had gone to the toilet and was late coming out, their horse was actually waiting, knowing that my person hasn't arrived. And we just slowly, slowly built the exercises. So, and it always involved lots of basically centering and mindfulness so that you're arriving in a place where you're connected with yourself. Mm -hmm. And then you go out and by the end, after two to four days, they were doing all these liberty exercises with the horses following because they had just constantly built this connection. Mm. Yeah. Yeah. I think that. Yeah. yeah, I think you're really right. It really, um, there, there's a lot less of the the cognitive. It's very different. It's it's very. I mean, there is talking, but it's it's, um, you know, it's it's, it's talking about it's, it's it's talking about really different things. It's talking about um, people are more somatic. They're more um, they're they're more talking about. Emotions and there's this, you know, symbols and it's they might they might be talking about um, you know visions and, and quests and things like that. It just naturally sort of comes out of this. Um, yeah. 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 Oh yeah. Go ahead. And and so. You, you get an awareness of yourself, which is a little bit of what came up. We had um, this beautiful Buddhist monk come to one of the mindfulness. He, he just loved yeah. horses and had been talking with Zahn for years. And he came along and we had big Arabs and we had little ponies and picked up the card and he got this little pony. And this little pony hadn't been near grass for ages. And he was sort of a bit... That he, there were some big stunning horses and he had this little pony. And then for the first few times, the little pony just wanted to eat grass. And so he's sort of there managing thoughts and expectations and thinking. He, he said to us, I was thinking, this pony's greedy. This <laughs> and and out, they were almost like they would be like this with each other, back to back. They just weren't interested. There was no interest from the pony. It was just like, it was just, there was no, it was, there was an unhappy marriage. And he's just going, it's greedy. It's greedy. And a few sessions in, he sat there and suddenly he went, I'm greedy because I want you just to focus on me. And just the, like, wow. And the photos of them it just over changed. the night, everything it changed. just so when connected after that. They're just like absolutely in love. Yeah. 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 So this coming back and learning about yourself, mm. what what's actually in your subconscious, and so Absolutely. Yeah. 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 So, well, we, we were going home a few months ago, and us, I was in a car behind San, and she called me and said, There's something on the road. I, I thought it was a leaf, but I'm not sure. I called her back and said, It's actually, um, I was going to say squirrel. Yeah, I've gone traveling. It's, it's a possum. And it was a baby possum, that not that young, but it had been on its mother's back and she'd got a fright and run up the tree and it's up the tree and this possum's just on the side of the road, just sort of sitting there up on its back legs. And I've stopped and I called Sam back and she's come back from the other side and got out of the car with um, my jacket and bent down 
and this possum ran straight across and jumped into the jacket. Oh, wow. Jumped and into the arms, yeah. Just was like, <clears throat> and, and we, we rang and double checked and they said, yeah, put it in the tree, the mother's watching. And I kept my eye on the mother and she was watching. And they said, if you put it in the tree nearby, it'll come down and get it soon. But, and, but it also, now I have to tell the other yeah. story, which is the, the thing about the, the interspecies connections are just extraordinary. When you, when you see that the, the way that animals will interact with each other. And another baby possum story was I was watching this little possum. Um, I was out in the paddock and I watched it running and I'm thinking, oh, does it need rescuing or not? I'm not sure. It was a little ringtail. And I just what maybe it's going back to its nest or something. So I'm following it along and it hadn't sort of seen me. And it ran and it ran to Alicia, who was one of our horses, um, who was standing um, uh, standing next to a tree. <clears throat> and it ran up the tree, and I'm watching this, and I can't believe it, it ran up the tree along the branch and it reached down and tried to touch the horse. <laughs> and then oh, can't the horse sort of moved away a bit. So it ran back down the tree. And ran up the horse's leg. And at that point, I moved in. I went, okay, this is not, you obviously do need rescuing. And I just, and it just relaxed in my hands. And then it was just so, oh, thank God somebody's found me. Like something's happened to its mother and it's alone. And, but, but it was, it was going to go, look, I don't know what to do. This horse will do. You know, some other, I need some other being. I need, you know, and, and and we found it and took it into care and um yeah and 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 then right away it was feeding actually and they said this is weird it's just feeding straight away it's like oh, I've I've been rescued I'm fine I'm you know I trust the world. No, Alicia was very <laughs> suspicious about it. She was like, mm, what about this? So that's part of it. Whilst we're watching a herd. Watching everything else as well. Yeah, we have it. We have um, had a white kangaroo um, come often. When that comes, and, and it's so it, it why I don't know, but it has so much meaning and so special, and people are so enamored. Like I think if we could do white kangaroo assisted therapy, we'd probably you know probably get a few people out in the paddock. Um, but you know when the animals when the animals come, I mean. Yeah, we, we we see we actually see strange animals that are wallaroos. Wallaroos seem to have so many different forms and they turn up they sometimes they're really big and hairy, sometimes they're small with black feet and you just you go out there and, and people see them and it's just the wonder, the childlike wonder that just is one of those moments when you can rechart your life. In, in the face of eastern grey kangaroos and their, their even last night we were coming home and Sarah's been bit. incredibly sick lately and um, she's using a lot of energy tonight but last night coming home was feeling really sick and we nearly got run off the road the dirt road by this white car going really fast and you're like this is not good and sure enough a few minutes later there's a, a wallaby that they'd hit so we got out and it was a, the baby. So the mother was dead, got the baby in, in a pillowcase and son just held it in against her to keep it warm. And it woke up like, even by the end of the night, by the time getting home, <laughs> improved a lot. Mm. And this morning, so... Yeah, yeah I was feeling very... Sorry. Last I was night, feeling very self-pitying and then it just left. Yeah. <laughs> this little being... It was in a lot worse situation. <laughs> yeah, it is. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Which, and so compassion and physical health are aligned. Yeah. yeah. Things are things are. Hmm. The heat is um, on the horse that's pulling this scoop to build the irrigation canal. So, uh, <coughs> you know, he told me that 
the reason that we have a one hour option time in the public service and all that is because that's about the amount of time a horse needs to have a Wow. Wow. Look, I, I actually started collecting um, a list of sayings. I, I don't know where it is. Of all the sayings that are like have come from from the horse horses, like you know, headstrong, um, give it give it a bit more rain. They're just very obvious ones, but there are just in our I I yeah I, I, the 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 interconnection with us is is so much, and and some of it maybe is not you know not being so great for the horses, um, but they've definitely been with us and and shaping us. Uh, for a long time, I don't think we're we're able to shape them. They're still they're still just you know quite quite wild spirits, really. Most horses, even the littlest, tiniest miniature horse, can be quite quite a wild thing. You know. I mean, do you um, yes, we're open to all things. Um, something that I actually do want to do um, start um, is 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 a conservation therapy group. Um, uh, but yeah, but you know, we offer therapy. Um, I I work out of Yas for a couple of days a week in an office um, because that's a big part of the demand. Um, but I still um, I still have my you know slab hut uh, room at the, at the farm, and you know where there's animals all over the place in nature. Um, but yeah, I want I want to do a um, and you know it could be Medicare rebated group for eco, for conservation therapy. Yeah. That's something I really want want to get up going. Just um, so would you have to be in your conservation? No, no, no. Just anybody. Anybody can turn up for their mental health. That would be their, the goal. Would be their mental health. No, so. I, I'm thinking the leadership. You know, like um, for people who want to do leadership in an area that perhaps get more frustrated with the people they're trying to educate than help them because you know, there's just no. That's a great. That's a great theme. Yeah, we've we've worked with all sorts of organisations. We haven't really. Um, well, we have actually worked with Greens. We've done workshops for the. Um, we've we've you know we've worked with all sorts of. Men. We do actually do leadership and sort of the more corporate thing, even though we don't. You know, so sort of like obviously. Um, so we've had groups come in from overseas that teach leadership, yeah. and I had said to them, I met one of them in Germany, and I said, "You want to know about leadership? You come." talk to our horses so they organized to bring their top 12 people that taught leadership over for three days and they learnt about they said we gave them a quite a good rate hoping they would go back and tell people and they came back the following year and um said we haven't told anyone we've improved so much we want to keep it a secret <laughs> <laughs> so that backfired but they actually flew the next team out the following year. They because they were they were they were so open to it. Um, they were um, people um, that they hadn't had a lot to do with any animals before, and they were just so open to receiving this that they went home and redid their whole you know huge business international business plan based on what they learned in the arena with the horses. So they were also very open to metaphor. Yeah, they were open to metaphors. Yeah. Yeah. The group that came over. Oh, so many. The metaphors are just they're just drenched. Working with horses is drenched in metaphors. Um so just one that um I'm just trying to think one that they just were, with this group when they were asked to as a group at liberty take the stallion from one end to the other. And all of a sudden, the leader stood behind and organised the group. Mm -hmm. And as it moved, kept organising who was standing there. And Maita told us that that was how she was going to do her whole organisation. She got all the information she needed with watching this group 
with this horse. Oh, oh but they, they, they naturally formed that pattern. The pattern that they needed to walk our very, very incredibly powerfully independent stallion who would never do anything unless it was 100% consensual. Um, they they formed a certain they felt felt that they needed this person here and that person there and that and then they took it home and organized their organization in that way that these people will be supports these people will be leaders these people will be raising energy yeah they built that yeah the other thing that they learned from that was um so they i think the first interaction with the horses was just you know, honeymoon, oh, I love it. it's so good, it's so good, it's so, you know. And then the next, what, what always happens, we, we've known to watch for this, is the second interaction, people have their expectations. Oh, you did this last time, so you're going to do this again, or something is going to be this, and and the horses don't like it. They don't like the expectations. They're like, no, see you later. I'm going, I'm leaving. The people come with expectations, and, and then, and so suddenly the horses all just, sort of didn't do anything for all of them. They didn't do it. They didn't do what they wanted. And what they learned from that was they weren't, they said, this is exactly how it is with our um, our stakeholders in our you know, organisation, which we need. They, they, they're some sort of, I don't know what their stakeholders are. They're not, they're not but they're people that they need for their organisation that are outside their organisation. And they said, so they totally reworked the way they work with their stakeholders from what from the reaction of the horses um, so metaphors everywhere. There are metaphors everywhere with horses because people go, oh, that's, you know, that's like this or that's like that. And, you know. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Well, I think that the, um, the mirror neuron in horses is extraordinary. So the mirror neuron where you learn from someone else is doing something. So... We know that because um, so we've had this joy of living in amongst a herd of horses that not many people get. Often people have one horse or two. We just so we get to watch the whole herd. So we've got a very greedy pony. We had a very greedy pony, and so I had to teach him because he was give me the food, you know. And so I taught I taught him look away, and then I'll give you the food, right? And I taught this one little pony. He's very quick, so he learned it very quickly. Like look away, that you get the food. And so now all of our horses, if you don't give them their food right away, they try to look away no. in case that's going to get the food quicker. No, they didn't learn it. They learned it from him. So they learn, and we've had horses from who who passed away only a generation of you know um, still doing the same things. They've never met the original horse, and they still have. So the habits get passed through. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, that's a really interesting one. Like, perhaps you can come back to the way we started, it was a bit of a long term uh, evolution perspective. <coughs> the way horses have evolved, co evolved as human beings. Yeah. In a sense. Uh, I wonder where you're going because horses are no longer being bred for their for their offspring, you know. Mm. They're no longer being bred, hopefully, for military purposes at all. Yeah. They're no longer, uh, many of the old are not being bred for yeah. agriculture. So the pets uh, are. Uh, uh, horses and so forth. No, you're absolutely could talk to um, a lot of people are pretty concerned about where where we're going um, with um, 
the horse breeding. I mean, we're having horses bred for you know for the show for looks. Um, the Arabian horses to, for the shows they need to have big eyes and jowls, and they can't they can't breathe. I mean, they can still breathe obviously, but they can't breathe the way a horse with an, the original Arabian horse could with its um, you know sort of more wide nose. Yeah, there's the horses, their feet. Their, their feet are, people are not breeding for feet. Now, feet is the foundation of a horse. And every other, and the, the, so people are breeding even though they're to form feet. So we're, our horses are going way down here. They're really, you know, you see more and more, more and more horse problems. Um, so I can have horses. They're concerned about breeding, about lack of survival of the fittest principle. Yeah, I mean, I think there are people that are trying to do the right thing with, but I think the overall um, intent of what a horse is 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 not not serving the horse um, generally. Yeah. So in the US, it is quite big with um, their services to their Ex soldiers and the emergency services Ex that yeah. um, the horses now heal the damage done in the emergency services and the air for, and their um, armed services. So that is getting, that's big and getting bigger and bigger. And so perhaps that's, by them entering the therapeutic field, um, yeah, perhaps they've organised themselves to find another role. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Okay. Thanks very much. It's been very much. Oh, it's a pleasure. Thank you very much, everyone, Thank for you your so attention. Thank you so much for us. Thank you for Thanks, everyone, for coming tonight. Um, we also have uh, spoken of our appreciation is the certificate that we also think we want to take in the class. Oh, that's beautiful. Thank you so much. So thank you very much for such a wonderful presentation. It's been a pleasure. It's been marvellous and a good start for the year. And thank you for the people coming. So we're great to see everyone coming along. And um, so next... <coughs> March, <coughs> sorry, <coughs> in March, um, Friday the 1st, um, we hear from our friend, Dr. Craig Sandro, with stillness, turbulence and pressure and personal story from Central Australia. And that's the day for our annual general meeting, which is at 7pm, prior to our usual Friday meeting. So note that your last year's membership ends now and we need to renew for the coming year for March. So if you come along, make sure that we there for renewal. And that's AGM, of course, so we have the AGM so um, various people um, on the committee will come together and nominate a new committee. So if you feel up for wanting to be on the committee, you, you're very welcome and that you'll be eager to contribute to the society in some ways because we, we really do need some extra assistance um, because like a lot of other organisations, we fade away from the people overdoing it. <laughs> that we Hopefully that won't happen. So I'd like to good, good night. And we'll, but before we go, we'd like Carolyn to come and tell us what's going on with This Is The Nature, chance to get out in nature. Nurture and nature, isn't it? <laughs> but like a lot of other things that we're involved with, we're involved with the um, um, garden, at Gavilia Park Garden, that we've it's been in um, operation for 12 years now. It's near the hospice in Canberra, and we organise that for a healing, a healing and meditative garden. So if you're up for coming along and having a healing and meditation, Carolyn's going to tell you what's going on. <laughs> 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 I'm 
I, I, last oh, last yeah. weekend, I was out there with the lawnmower because I thought, no, I can't stand that grass. It's too tall. I don't like it. So I'm going to cut it with a lawnmower. <laughs> so I was running around and I think, oh, it's either going to kill me or make me feel better. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Exercise. Yeah. I don't think the change, the being in that space, when that change, that, that, that sense of peace in that place, I don't know if anyone knows this beautiful circular garden just just on the other side of the car park from Clay Holland House. So and just that feeling of being there and that that nature and that energy. And and when when people have been working in that space together, it's just got quite a beautiful energy. So we invite um, to So yeah, we're inviting everyone for Valentine's Day. We can have a little for the love camp event. Um, and it's in celebration also of Marion Mahoney Griffin because that's her birthday. And last year we planted some plants in memory of her um, in a spot where we've been doing a, a land care wellbeing um, activity event that um, Sally, who spoke here about nature, she came here last, as well. last year and spoke, and then we had a, a garden. Yeah. Talk how they're um, doing, doing things with, with leaves and things. We didn't have any horses, but we had to pretend <laughs> there was some. We saw some um, other animals, cows, the planet, making a mooing noise. <laughs> so, Tuesday, Tuesday, wait, we have so from four till six, and then there'll be more events over the year. I think we yes. will be aiming to catch up. Yep. Um, maybe monthly. I think we're going to discuss the timetable for yeah, that. Yeah, we'll coming and doing a special ceremony. Um, the Japanese, the blessing of the gardeners. Yeah, last year we had the Steiner, um, the Anthroposophy Society, come and do the, the, the their traditional blessing of the gardeners. And this year it'll be a Japanese group. Um, yeah. The Sukyo Mahakari yeah. group will be doing the blessing of the garden. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. The 14th. Okay. So it's a way to um, oh, is, it, is, it, is it Tuesday this year? It's a Wednesday. It's a Wednesday. It's a Wednesday. Yeah. Wednesday. Yeah. To celebrate Valentine's Day. It's another way of doing it. You don't yeah. want to stay home. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, Harry. We, we look forward to seeing people coming along to that. Or on the definitely the and uh, definitely the first of March because um, we come along at seven o'clock, that's the AGM, or we come along to Craig. Craig's coming here especially, and um, so it'll be interesting to meet him, to uh, listen to his story. And anyway, if anyone would like to do a presentation, um, you're, you're very welcome to approach us about that as well. We have um, Kirsten and John doing